CataractCoach.com. Cataract quiz. What does this sign mean? The tripan blue dye leaks out in this pattern. Hmm. Patient had prior trauma three months ago, and then the beat scan looks okay. Let's look at the eye here. So what do we have here? Whitish cataract looks intumescent, going in with a needle for decompression. And let's take a look here. Trying to decompress. Maybe that worked. Start There you go. Look, you start to get oozing out of all that liquefied lens material. There it is, filling up in the AC. All that lens milk, that's the liquefied lens cortex. All right, let's get a paracentesis going here. Oh, now you see the eye's hypotonic a little bit. Okay, well, let's see what happens. There's some tripan blue dye in the eye. There's the tripan blue dye. Now watch carefully. Yes, we sped the video up, as you've noticed. Now you dilute the dye down, but look what happens. Ready? Check it out. All right, it's all, it's all gone, right? All the dye's gone. But now look, where's the dye coming from? So the dye's able to pool somewhere, right? Think about it. It's able to pool, not just under the iris, the pupil dilates well. So there's probably zonular weakness or a zonular gap there. So now making the main incision, going in with the cystotome. Ooh, look at all the lens milk. That's a milky one. So time to go in and evacuate that. So you can see, let's see, the pressure looks okay. More viscoelastic. You can do viscoelastic to push it out of the way. Probably easier just to go on the IA probe and just aspirate all that. There we go. Aspirate all the milky stuff. Hopefully the capsule hasn't run out. Hopefully there's no Argentinian flag sign. More tripan blue dye. Hey, let me tell you about the Cataract Coach podcast. It's on every podcast service. It is the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. And its sole purpose is to make you a better ophthalmologist. You will succeed more in life. We'll teach you all the secrets. I'm dead serious. Check it out. Here we go. Going back now. Now you got more dye in the eye trying to get a rexus done. Rexus looks pretty good so far. There's some maybe HPMC on the cornea. Hydroxyprolomethylcellulose. Here comes some more viscoelastic. Let's get that rexus completed. I'll take anything. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty even. As long as it's continuous and curvilinear with no running out edges, we'll take it. So go, go, go. Getting it almost done. Hmm, all right, keep going. Take your time. Ah, I like good. Another good idea. You can put more viscoelastic. As we all know, viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. Use as much viscoelastic as you need. What's that? Oh, vitreous band popping through now. Here's, you don't even have the rexes done yet. Now it's going to be a challenge. Let's get that rexes done. And I'd put some triamcinolone in the eye too, just to see where the vitreous is. And you got to get that nucleus out. I would want to get the nucleus up, get it out of the bag. Now, look, the pupil came down, too. This is stressful. And you got a little baby rexus. Hopefully it's soft. Okay, there you go. Cutting the vitreous bands just with some micro scissors. Okay, again, triumph cylinder for me would be a little helpful here. Let's see what else we got. Now, i got to remove that nucleus. Be cautious here. It could all, the whole thing could fall back. Chopper being placed. I'd bring it up, up, up out of the bag. A little bit of a chop there. As you can see, so a smaller little endonucleus because you had so much liquefied lens cortex. There you go, bringing it up. I like that. Good job there. Let's make sure the bag's intact. If it's not, you better put on that indirect ophthalmoscope and look back there or at least use a retinal viewing system, something. Let's clean this up. But it looks like the bag's intact. Well, that's fantastic. So there's some viscoelastic. There we go. Yeah, the bag looks pretty good. Pretty good. You can get the lens in first, and then I'd still want to put in some triamcinolone. I want to see what the vitreous situation is. Oh, there we go. Going with the eye probe again. And let's zoom out here. Here comes the lens. All righty. Three piece. I like the idea of a three piece lens here. Yes, of course. Remember the anti S orientation. And enlarging the incision a little bit. I like that. I like that. That's a good idea. You can always put a suture or two at the end. Here, get the lens in nice and easy. Now, if you have zinal loss there, you can put the lens in the bag at that meridian, and the haptic will bolster the area of zinal loss. But if you're going to put the sulcus, I'd want to have those haptics about 90 degrees away. So it looks like maybe a sulcus lens here. Sulcus placement with haptics 90 degrees away. Very nice. Very, very nice. I probe one more time. And again, I'd love to have some triamcinol in the eye just to see. There we go. Hey, you're right in my mind. And so no vitreous prolapse at this point. Looks pretty good. Let's get that pupil coming back down. And a little maybe a little nuclear chip or something. What's going on there? Yeah, there you go. And a suture going in. Hey, I like the idea. Easy to put a suture in now. Much harder to put it in tomorrow. I like it. Get the eye pressure back to normal. Tie the suture up. And I bet you the patient will be pretty dang happy. You know, think about it. The patient had a no vision beforehand. White cataract trauma. 
And you got to be careful what's going to happen to this patient's other eye. You get trauma again. People who get trauma tend to have it another time. So there's a suture in there, and it is, oh, indirect ophthalmoscopy is performed. Thank you. Fantastic. Super, oh, superior choroidal detachment was found. Yeah. So it's always interesting what, what you see back there, right? These white cataracts, you can't always tell on ultrasound. So beautiful case here. Great job. Thanks for sending it in. Remember, check out cataractcoach.com, the teaching website. So much great material on there. Hey, follow me on social media. Thank you.